What's up guys, Axis here and today we're going to be doing day 3 of modeling week. Today we're going to be doing this um, little cloner based model based on a Beance project that I did and also the intro called Epic Dub. Uh, this is just a really effective um, kind of tunnel um, that you can create in Cinema 4D and when coupled with like reflective materials and um, some like glow materials uh, to light it up, it looks really nice. So it's um, it can look really complex, but um, I'm just going to try and simply show you how to do it today. So first off, we're going to go and get an inside from the uh, spline tool here. And what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to rotate this 30 degrees, like so. I'm going to then uh, I'm going to then um, click uh, T for the scale tool hold command or control and drag down the scale to about here and then put this inside of a spline mask and put the other one just below it and then click on spline mask object and then we're going to set the mode to a subtract b and i've got these wrong way around so just swap these around if, if you're not getting it then what we can do is we can go and put this inside a extrude i'm going to extrude this about 70 uh, let's go like a hundred. Uh, I'm just gonna mess with this until I get what I want, and then I'm gonna go with the Fong tag set this to 30, so we don't have any issues with clipping. Uh, now uh, I'm gonna maybe go about here, and I'm gonna also scale up slightly, and maybe uh, scale up the inside object. There we go. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click uh, C to make this editable. Right click, go to select children. C again, right click, and then connect objects and delete. And now we've got one object of the tunnel. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on enable axis. I'm going to go down here to the rotation. You're going to see it's at 30 because when we rotate it at 30, I'm going to put this back down to zero. So the axis is uh, on zero. This won't affect the rotation. And now we've got this. We're going to cut this object in half. So, uh, how we're going to do this is we are going to go uh, and get the knife tool by clicking M and then K on the keyboard, going into the polygon selection and dragging down to here, and do the same on the top, and then I'm going to rotate around and do the exact same thing I just did on the other side. Rotate around to the front, oops, didn't mean to do that, like so. I'm going to go into the front view, click 0 for the uh, rectangle selection tool and then I'm going to go to only select visible elements and de-check, uh, uncheck that, sorry. Select this side and then de uh, delete that part and just to test we're going to put this into a symmetry object and as you can see, perfect symmetrical object and this will make it easier at the end because we're not going to have to do all the different cuts ourselves. And now what we can do is we can go crazy with a knife and we're going to uh, do little objects here. So um, I'm just going to do something simple. So I'm going to get the plain uh, knife tool. Again, if you aren't on the knife, click M and then K. And from here, we can go, I'm going to maybe put it on three cuts, uh, 30 division, I might turn this up to six. And there we go, we've got a load of um, spaces to play with like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click Inner Extrude, uh, de-check, preserve groups, take that in, then click T for the scale tool, hold command or control while you're dragging the Z in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this in, like that, with extrude. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this down myself by um, going to extrude inner. Then I'm going to right click and we can subdivide this, it's a really cool um, little effect. You can choose how many subdivisions there are, make sure you don't turn this up too high otherwise you uh, might choke your CPU and that won't be very good because then you'll have to uh, make sure you have a save or you're pretty much done. Then I'm going to extrude this up, extrude inner and then I'm going to subdivide this again and then extrude inner. Again, making sure preserve groups is turned off. And what we can do here is we can uh, go into the uh, edge tool, double click on here, right click and go to, uh, to bevel. 
and I'm not going to bevel all the edges but I'm going to turn the subdivisions up on this one so that's just an example of what we can do I'd bevel every edge if I was doing this properly because um, bevels just look a lot nicer and now I'm going to do a little thing on the bottom and the top I'm going to make it the same um, in fact no, I'll, just, I'll switch it up, I'll do, I'll do different ones on the top and bottom so I'm going to select this side uh, I'm going to change the cuts to like 2 uh, and then I'm going to select here and here and I'm going to scale this down to roughly like a, closer to a square but still obviously a rectangle in this case and then I'm going to extrude this up bevel this out, make sure the subdivisions are turned up like so and we have a cool little panel here and then I might also uh, scale this down when I'm doing this I'm holding command when I'm uh, scaling uh, with the uh, the scale tool up here subdivide and you should can see if we scale down like that way instead of using uh, inner extrude we get these really uh, cool little um, polygons at the side which then we can also mess about with so I'm just going to select some random points extrude inner and then we can um, extrude them down and then I'm going to extrude random points like this as you can see create a really cool effect if you bevel these after as well and then uh, we just repeat the same process for the top I'm just going to do this real quick put it at 5 and then I'm going to scale this down all together extrude inner subdivide and maybe subdivide again and we can create some cool effects like that and then you can mess about maybe make with this one smaller maybe make this one go inside the object uh, and just switch up a bit so yeah that's just for um, that part and then I'm going to create another end side there we go uh, again same process 30 you could have saved some time if you did this at the start and uh, create a copy but I didn't remember that I'm going to put this inside a spline mask A subtract B Put both of these in, wrong way around, so switch it up. Put in an extrude while holding Alt. And I'm going to go like minus 30 uh, and then put some uh, fillet caps on them. Turn up the fillet cap steps to like 10 on each. And then also I'm going to turn down uh, or up the, uh, the uh, extrusion to 10, minus 10, I mean. Um, just I'm gonna do it just so the bevel is just there and I'm gonna put this on 30 oh that screwed up oh wait no it didn't it's fine so if I just go like this should be fine and then this is what we're going to illuminate so we'll just call this light and main and then we can put this on here and then uh, this is the uh, cool part you can use the cloner. Uh, sadly you cannot use um, render instances for this case because um, of the fact that we're going to use a deformer inside of this null which I'll get to in a second so if I if I just duplicate the light first and spell correctly um, make sure you're holding alt when you click this uh, we're going to go Y to 0 and we're going to drag this out to the second one reaches the end of this object so then we can duplicate this a bunch of times and it will look great so now that we've done that uh, I can put this cloner inside uh, this this main object so there we go and swing, uh, turn up the uh, Z same principle and then as you can see we've got a little tunnel here and then we can turn this up to like 10 let's see I'd normally do more than 10 but um, that's how you create the core effect 
put these both in a cloner by doing Alt G and then do Alt G once again and we've got the cloner inside this uh, null that is a child of the other null. So we just call this objects, hold shift and click bend. And now uh, we can. Uh, what you do is you test which way that it's going to bend it. And in this case it's going to bend it in a really weird angle which we don't want. So as you see it's going to do this, which is not what we're going for. So you can you can see by the, the illustration of the object which way you're going to want to put it. So I'm going to go 90 and 90, no I don't want that, go 90, like that. And then as you can see it's only bending the start of it and that's not what we want. I'm going to put the strength to zero so we can properly see what we're doing. Zoom out, bring this to around the middle. I'm going to go to, the, I'm using the top view for this by the way. Oh, oh, turn up the strength. I mean turn up the Y, I think. No, no, this is the Z. Is it? Ah oh, yeah, it is the Y, sorry. Uh, to, until both sides evenly have this uh, deformer coming out of it, which they don't currently. Let's move this up a bit. There we go, that's pretty much perfect. Um, and then what we can do is we can turn up the strength and then I can rotate this slightly if you just click R for the rotation and I'm going to rotate it like this we have a little cool um, a cool um, a bend in this object you can make it more extreme obviously but I, I'm just going to leave it kind of subtle and then uh, we're going to create what we can do for the, uh, the camera in this case so we're going to go to spline Bezier, click at the top and then click at the bottom and then roughly guess where the uh, curve is going to head. So, I mean, that's alright, I think. Yeah, I think I did pretty alright there. Uh, and then in the front, bring this up to the top. And that should be about it. Now, what we can do is we can get a camera and then make sure it's in the active camera, right click Cinema 4D tags and spline, where's spline? god damn it, align to spline, so right at the top click on this uh, little uh, arrow, click on the spline and we're not in, and there we are, we're inside the object so what I did was I rotated it uh, at the bottom, so I did like uh, here we go, so like that, and then do F9 and make sure that this is also keyframed at the same point and I'm going to drag both of these out it'll, if you select both of them it will drag both of them out and then now we're going to uh, change the position up to about 50 or uh, wherever it's kind of near the end but not quite there click on the keyframe and then rotate this accordingly with the coordinates I'm also going to go at like minus 45 for the uh, the Z rotation and then we're going to F9 this and make sure both of these are keyframed and if we oh, we didn't do this correctly did we? <laughs> oh I didn't move the keyframe god damn it alright okay so let's go move it into here oh we're, we're keyframing the wrong thing sorry position there we go that's it and then I'm going to go up to here looks about right uh, I can just remove that keyframe now, we don't need it. So there we go, we've got a little sweeping camera movement through this cool um, little tunnel. And what you can do for this is that you can create a reflective material, such as this one. Uh, make sure you turn the roughness down to zero because that's, that's what I uh, went for. Also made it slightly darker. Um, so mess about with the specular, but I did most of this work in, I did all of the work in Octane for the uh, rendering, in fact. So, um, yeah, and then you can create obviously a glow material, so just glow, maybe like 100 for this, 50 for that, kind of thing. I was using a black body emission tag in Octane if you guys are interested. Um, so yeah, that was, that's basically um, all I did for um, this little project. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I maybe should have put this further down the list because it's a pretty difficult tutorial. But if you guys enjoyed this, remember to leave a like. Um, and if you want to see uh, more tutorials, which you will be throughout the week, um, just you know comment 
and also subscribe so you don't miss any of that stuff. Thanks for watching.